Baal Turim at the beginning of the parasha makes a very, very well-known statement. The Baal Turim garments ve'atot etzaver, lo hizgir Moshe bezeh seder, that Moshe is not mentioned in parashas tetzaver, different than every parasha in the Torah from the time that Moshe Rabbeinu is born and forward. Why not? Says the Baal Turim, because a little bit later on by the Chaito Egel, when he's davening, when he's praying, when he's beseeching Hashem that he should forgive Bnei Yisrael for the, making the golden calf, he says, if you don't do it, wipe me out. Wipe me out from your book. HaKadosh Baruch didn't want to do that. He forgave Bnei Yisrael. But yet, the Gemara tells us in Maseches Makos that the kilal of a tzaddik has to come true, the curse of a tzaddik has to come true, and therefore it had to realize itself somewhere, and here is where Hashem chose that he should, his name should be eliminated. There's a second reason as well. The second reason given by the Dabal Turim is that this parsha talks about the Big Day Kahuna. And that was a little bit difficult for Moshe Rabbeinu. Because Moshe Rabbeinu, the Gemara tells us, Masechah was supposed to be the Kohen Gadol. But because he was refused, he didn't want to go. When HaKadosh Baruch asked him to go down to Mitzrayim, he ended up passing it to Aaron. The Kahuna was passed from Moshe to Aharon. So because of that, Agbas Nefesh, a little bit of an unsettled feeling for Moshe Rabbeinu, his name is not mentioned in this week's parasha. And what's interesting is that both of these seems like negative reasons for Moshe Rabbeinu. And why that's surprising is because the Mechini Nami Sifracha and the Moshe not wanting to go came from a good place. He came from his wanting to do what's best for Klai Yisrael, trying to figure out his humility, who was the best person to go, of trying to figure out how Bani Yisrael could be forgiven. So why is it that he would be eliminated? Why is it that he should maybe even be rewarded for the midos that he displayed? And I thought perhaps we could answer based on a different question that the Orachayim Makadosh and other Mepharshim ask. And they ask, they wonder, Why does the Parsha start with Va'ata and you should command B'nai Yisrael? Hashem has been telling Moshe consistently. Last week's Parsha, V'yasisa, 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 V'yasu. You should go ahead and do it. They're already having a conversation. So why do they say, oh, you should command B'nai Yisrael? Of course, he should command B'nai Yisrael. Why does it have to say you? We know who he's talking to. It should say Tzav as B'nai Yisrael, as we have other times in the Torah. Command B'nai Yisrael. Why Ve'ata? And I thought perhaps we could suggest, based on a beautiful pshat from the Lubavitch Rabbi Zechon Levracha. And what he suggested is that when you think about it, a name, a person's name, is not really the essence of a person. Right? A person's name is just a way that others can refer to that person. If you have a room full of people and they didn't have names, it would be very difficult to have a conversation. But that's not really who the person is. And that's why names can be changed. Names can be added, names can be dropped. A person is not born with a name. It takes time whether for a girl at a Kriya Torah, whether for a boy at the Bris, the name is not the essence of who the person is. Ve'ata, and you, that is referring to the essence of the person. So the reality is that Moshe Rabbeinu is certainly mentioned in our parsha, but he's mentioned in a different way. Yes, mecheni nami sifracha, his name, the word, those letters, mem, shin, hey, mo, they don't appear. But Moshe appears in a much more special way. Ve'ata, to, for, for one to get to a person's essence, you don't need the person's name. Ve'ata, and you, speaks to the person himself. The you is higher, is more elevated than the person's name. And that perhaps is what HaKadosh Baruch Hu was telling Moshe Rabbeinu. Ve'ata titzaveh, and you. And yes, I know you would have wanted the Kongal, it's not so easy, but we have a special relationship. I can see and I can relate to you on a different level than just your name. Because you put yourself on the line for cholesterol, I'm going to take your name out. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add in Ve'ata. I'm not going to leave you out completely. It's not going to be Tzav and Moshe. It's not going to be related to anywhere in the parasha. But Ve'ata, Kodesh Baruch Hu says, I have a special relationship with you because I appreciate that you're so selfless and you recognize who you are. Maybe that's the significance of why it says Va'ata, and that the two reasons given by the Torah are not a criticism of Moshe Rabbeinu, but are in fact a positive element of Moshe Rabbeinu's personality. Maybe it's something 
for each and every one of us to think about as well. Is sometimes our name, our externals distract us. And to be able to peel away that which is external and know who we are, what is most important, what our values are, who our etzem is, who we are fundamentally, is really what defines us, but is not always an easy task. And as we read the Parshios of the Mishkan and the Big Day Kahuna, that's part of the challenge of reaching redemption, of trying to push ourselves into a situation in which we have that clarity, in which we know who we are, what we want to do, and hopefully HaKadosh Baruch Hu allows us to reach those goals and to achieve our maximum potential.